Mike's going to give us an awesome presentation. He spent 60 hours last week preparing for this. Um, I've never seen someone more prepared for a presentation, Mike. It's going to be killer. He's going to be talking about everything about house hacking and flipping. Well, not house hacking, burring, I mean. Um, so if you want to get into it, Mike, I'd love to hear, hear your incredible presentation. Yeah, so you can see my screen now. Uh, you can see it? Yep. Let's see if I can minimize that. So a little bit more about me. Uh, shit, did I say I was 27? I guess I'm 28. Graduated from Oakland in 2017, operations management business degree. Uh, I've been working full-time for an automotive tier one for five years now. Um, as a business analyst, so I'm constantly working in Excel numbers. Uh, I was working in purchasing before that. Uh, I have four classes left in my MBA. I'm taking three this semester and one in the summer, and that's at Lawrence Tech. I purchased my first house three and a half years ago. Uh, that's in Oxford. I grew up in Sterling Heights area. Um, when I'm not in school or working on uh, houses, I enjoy working on cars, boats, and buying toys. I've got a wakeboard boat, pontoon, two sit-down jet skis, a stand-up, and a motorcycle. So my garage is fucking full. Um, this is in my house. So top picture is um, when I first bought it, obviously basement's unfinished, um, have utilities, furnace, hot water tank, laundry area over there. This was just like storage, water softener. Um, there was a bathroom right here. Bathroom was totally, we didn't use it at all. It was pretty gross. So finished it completely storage room, laundry room with utilities, bathroom right back here and everything else is wide open. So I have all the tools, I had the skills, I, I pretty much know what I'm doing. So um, just expanding myself to working on other houses and trying to make money from it. So I had a truck, I sold it to pocket some cash. Um, I bought that from a buddy as a deal, made a few thousand bucks on it. I bought a cheap van and pocketed about $18,000 from that truck. Um, so in July of this year, I purchased a Transit Connect little piece of shit van for 1800 bucks. Only had 70,000 miles. It was a steal of a price, um, but it allowed me to move materials and tools. Um, only six foot cargo area. So moving drywall um, didn't really work out well. In October, I saw a deal on a Dodge Sprinter um, diesel engine, higher miles, but it was only 2500 bucks. Um, it's got some rust on it and the brakes were shot, put about 500 bucks into it. And once that was up and running, I sold the transit for 6,500. So I'm constantly looking for the next deal, whether it's a car to flip, a house to flip, whatever it is. So here's the little transit that I had and then the Sprinter and Obviously, in the Sprinter, I can haul all my tools and totes, toolbox, vacuum, ladder, everything you could freaking need to go into a house. And you could fit tons of trash or whatever you need to haul around in. So um, I like this setup a lot more than a truck because at the end of the day, I don't have to unload anything. I just keep it in my driveway, lock it up, and I know I'm going to be all set. So into the flip. Um Located in Memphis, Michigan, which is way the hell up here. Um, my buddy found it. It was listed on the market, probably just listed few uh, listed a few days before um, we put an offer in. Asking price was about eighty thousand. Um, we put an offer of ninety one thousand, and we were the highest. Um, a hard money lender provided us a sixty five thousand dollar loan. Um, partner and I each brought about 16,000 cash to close, um, splitting, um, we split the cash to close pretty much evenly renovations. Um, and then our like mortgage payment, interest only mortgage payment, we're pretty much splitting. We just buy as needed. It's located in downtown Memphis, walking distance to the downtown area. It is a two bedroom, one bath, 900 square feet. 
uh, mainly on a crawl space, but it had an addition put on. So it's got a 300 square foot basement as well. Half acre, two car garage with workshop in the back and a shed. So it's, it's a pretty nice setup um, for like a first home where if you want to work in, work in the garage, you have a shed to house extra shit, whatever else. Um, initial estimates, we were thinking floor was about $5,000. I have pictures after this as well. Um, about 22,000 renovations is what we thought it needed. Um, new floor, new kitchen, new bathroom, clean up the laundry area, clear out the basement because there was a lot of shit. Um, the roof cap was bad. The property couldn't be mortgaged, which is why it was already at a pretty reduced rate on the market. Um, it needed trim painted, uh, paint the shed, trim trees, and the concrete patio was sloping towards the house, causing some water to leak into the basement at uh, times of heavy rain. So with being the first flip, but obviously um, I just started a business. I got a, I applied for like a commercial Home Depot card, um, which I was approved for next to no money because it's a new business, but I had a personal Home Depot credit card already from doing my own house renovations. So uh, purchases were made using Home Depot personal credit card, uh, purchases over $300 benefit from six months, 0% interest. So if you're flipping the house fast enough, we're coming up on, uh, I think we're about five months in right now. So, and that's a longer flip. We assumed we'd be done in a few months, two, three months. So if you put every, if you always plan on going to Home Depot, um, and spending over 300 bucks, you could basically push all your renovation costs, especially if you're doing the work yourself, off until you sell the place. And we also paired it up with when Menards is doing 11% rebates, Home Depot will match that. They don't tell you that, but anytime you, you basically just go on Home Depot's website, you type in your receipt stuff, and you'll get 11% off um, via mail-in rebate. So let me throw up some pictures. So hopefully you can see that still. Um, so this is the front of the house, overgrown. Um, not much, it doesn't look too bad, but at the same time, it's it looks small, it looks dated. Um, the siding, the paint was screwed up here from getting power washed previously by the previous owner. This trim was coming off and I don't know if I can zoom in, but yeah, this roof cap was basically screwed. So um, a mortgage company would say, okay, you, you can't mortgage this house. Uh, paint screwed up. Um, this aluminum siding wasn't the best, but it, it was, we figured we could paint the siding and make it work. Um, concrete patio in the back sloping towards the house. This is between the garage. So this is the original garage went to here. Then this is like an addition where the workshop was. You got the shed in the back and it's an, on a double wide lot. Um, there was a fence that was like here for privacy before it was super dated falling apart. Um, and then of course we closed on this house and this is, this just goes back to you're going to run into issues that you don't see. We literally closed on this house after we got a massive storm here in Michigan um, to where trees fell, took out the power. The day we closed, we got there and DTE drove their fucking trucks between the house and the garage here and literally shattered some of this concrete. So when we're walking through initially, we're not planning on, okay, replacing concrete, but we got screwed there by DTE. Shed needed to be painted. Um, more pictures of the back of the house there. Um, Central AC. Just a lot of trees and like, Shit just overgrown, um, not taken care of. I, there was an older lady living in this place. I think it was empty for a year or two prior to us buying it. So um, it just wasn't being taken care of too much. Um, let's see. 
This is the garage. Same thing with the roof cap on the garage. Um, this is in through the front door in the living room. There was carpet here. We tore out the carpet. So you have some old floors. This is to the left of that picture through this doorway here is the first bedroom. Um, it's narrow, but it's decently long. It's got like a little walk-in closet here, basically. This is through the living room. This is your kitchen with this ugly ass green carpet, um, dining room over here. You have a master bedroom back here. Your bathroom is behind this wall. And this line right here is, this was the addition back here. So your basement's here. You have all crawl space on this side. Um, so just walking through it, the floors were shot. You wouldn't possibly use those floors. Um, so with that, you get your baseboard trim and all your other shit. Here's your kitchen. So old cabinets, sink. Um, this does have a furnace. They had a wall unit in here originally. Um, no dishwasher. The fridge was probably in this back corner here. Um, laundry room over there. This was your bathroom. So with the bad roof cap, they obviously had water damage at one point that came through there. Bathroom's just super dated. It is a good size bathroom though. Um, this is your back bedroom carpet. Um, good size closet. This is, uh, this bedroom is a lot bigger than that front one. Um, there's the bedroom. So you have some closet space there, uh, more closet space there. This is what the uh, flooring ripped up. This is your laundry room. So you have a closet here. Um, this is a back back way in. Then your basement stairs go down. Um, so some storage. They had washer dryer up here. So main floor laundry, which is always nice, especially if you're older or um, walking downstairs with clothes is a bitch. So that is a benefit. Um, here's your basement stairs is basically right behind this photo. So they had tons of shit down here. Um, so we had to clean it up a lot and then it goes back. So on this, on this side of the wall is, um, your crawl space, but they have furnace, hot water, all your utilities. You have some storage back here. So small basement enough for storing shit. Um, here's some, uh, during photos. So we ripped out all those cabinets and of course you can see just how old, everything is between the different layers of wallpaper and other bullshit. Um, the neighbor actually grew up in this house. Um, I think Zillow where it was estimated that the house was built in like 1940 and the neighbor was laughing saying her fucking family's owned it since before 1900. So the house is over a hundred years old. Um, it's just funny looking at all the different flooring and, uh, backsplash and all the crap, um, all the tools and doors and all the stuff you have to move. And then it's the little shit you don't think about. So we wanted to do some recessed lights in this room. They had two layers of fucking drywall on the ceiling throughout almost the whole fucking house. They had drywall, a little board, and then the next set of drywall. So as we're drilling these holes to get them centered, I'm hitting boards and I'm hitting other things, a drywall to where it's like, where the, how the hell am I putting lights up? It just made everything again, not knowing the house. And of course you're not going to know that until you buy the house, but it's shit like that to where it's like, why the hell would you ever have two layers of drywall in your ceiling? And from what we saw, there wasn't any water damage on that drywall. The neighbor said they just fucking didn't want to, redo the drywall so they put another layer up there it was it's just stupid that's the before photos so now let's go to current state so um we're about one week of work left we have pretty much everything on the outside complete this is the front of the house so what we did instead of replacing the roof we looked at the roof we got up there we said it was good we did a new roof cap so we just had to replace the shingles on the top. Of course, we picked it when it was 95 fucking degrees outside, but we got that done in a day. So with that, we tried to clean our siding or paint the siding and it didn't work out. So we resided the house, resided the garage. 
Um, I don't know how much we spent on siding exactly, but the aluminum siding, we basically with tearing it off and taking it to a local, uh, scrapper or, uh, not scrapper. We took it direct to whoever we, we got about six or 700 bucks of aluminum, um, because there was so much siding. So that 700 bucks paid for a lot of the new siding. It was just our labor to put it up. Um, here's another picture. Driveway was cracked before. Um, but it's, it's looking pretty good. This was taken, I think last week, new garage door on there, um, siding, trim paint, everything's looking pretty cleaned up now. Um, shed in the back is painted, uh, back of the house. We tore out this tree. We trimmed up these trees. Um, the bush in the front, we trimmed up, uh, back of the garage is looking nice now. Um, little things like painting the chimney. We painted the bricks on the bottom uh, to make everything look good. The red and black on the shed really pops now, really stands out. All the neighbors are complimenting everything we've been doing. Um, the old windows we replaced with glass blocks, super easy to do. Um, insulates the house so much better. Um, we did luck out with... Uh, that day that DTE was there, um, you can see they actually redid their tire marks and they replaced all this fucking cement because we bitched them enough. Um, this was a picture taken earlier with our uh, dumpster between clearing out the basement and the garage. There was a ton of crap. Um, these pictures were taken earlier today. So now this is your uh, main living area. So wall paint, ceiling paint, got those recessed lights in there flooring throughout the whole house we still have a shit ton of tools around this is that front bedroom so it's kind of like a walk-in closet um decent size put a fan in here um the walls in there at the bottom were weird they had like wallpaper that wasn't it would have been a hell of a lot harder for us to like clean up the wallpaper so we did uh the planking in here which makes it really look good um here's our kitchen now so we put a island countertop in there there's storage on that side we're gonna go fridge we got a stainless steel dishwasher sink our two cabinets we're gonna get a stainless steel stove we got the hood again flooring throughout the whole place um same paint color throughout the whole place as well um and we still have whether it's grouting or caulking or doing painting here's our bathroom um so new flooring, new vanity, new lights, recessed lights. We still have to paint in there. New fan. We tiled new tile. We were able to keep the tub though. Um, so still very big bathroom. Here's your back bedroom. Um, again, vinyl flooring throughout uh, paint. Uh, we moved this fan from the dining room i believe it was still fine um laundry room so we changed uh, or uh i think we we kept the same cabinets we painted them we did our planking there we made a little bench area you got closet there these have to be pushed back we were working on the wall behind them so you have pretty pretty nice washer dryer in there um painting, trim, whatever it is, recessed lights. Uh, we put that in the main room, the kitchen, the dining room, the uh, laundry room, everything's super bright in the house. Here's your basement. Looks a lot better without a bunch of shit in there. Dry lock the walls. We raised the back patio on the outside to make sure water wasn't sloping in. Glass block windows really make it a lot nicer down there. Um, they did have a toilet. This was their one and a half bath. They had a fucking toilet between these two back in this corner here. So we capped that. Um, it was quite a pain in the ass to use the toilet if you wanted to, seeing that you have your pipes and everything right above your head. It gets a little hot with your furnace and hot water tank right there as well. Um, here's your storage. Again, we just sealed up the crawl space. White dry lock really makes it look like a bigger space. We added lights down here so everything's super bright. Um, so that's current state. So we don't have too much more to go. We put the vinyl plank on the stairs. 
Um, we just have like sternos. Um, we painted that. Basement's pretty much wrapped up. Um, garage is pretty much wrapped up. Um, just a few more things on the inside of the house to take care of. Let's see if I go back to. Wow, that is looking so. That's crazy how much of a difference that is, too, by the way. That house is looking awesome. Oh, yeah. I. And again, we. we uh, we thought we'd be into this. Um, we'd be done in two or three months. He was working on another flip. So we put this on the back burner. So here's some numbers. Purchase price of 91, hard money loan of 65, cash to close of 32. So between the 65 and 32 is about 6,000 in closing costs, which is how we get to just over 91,000. Renovations, we're at about 12 or 14 right now, I want to say. He has to add up some more of his receipts, but that's including utilities, taxes, insurance, all our building supplies. Holding costs, we're looking at about 3,900 bucks, which is 12% interest on the loan from the hard money lender, which is 650 bucks a month times six months. So if we would have been out in three months, it would have been about half. Selling fees, um, about 10% of their sell price. So we're, we're going to list for about 180,000. We have 130 invested, potential profit if we get a full, if it, if we're able to sell for 180 is just under 50,000 split that two ways. We're looking at about 25,000 each. So our biggest thing is going to be, um, doing a 1031 exchange, or are we going to take a 40% tax hit for capital gains, which would net us about 15. So obviously there's going to be a big difference between the two. Um, so finding a 1031 exchange or at least getting more information on that is going to really be the most beneficial for us. Uh, anybody have questions about this one? Yeah, I got a question. How do you? How are you estimating um, like your renovations? Like, how are you kind of? How did you rough roughly estimate all of your numbers? Um, it's not easy. So, floor of five k. I think we're assuming flooring, trim, um, everything in that. So, for a nice floor, you're looking at three to four bucks a square foot. You're obviously going to have some scrap in there. Um, so you're buying like 11 or maybe a 1, thousand, 1100 square feet of that. Plus your trim kitchen between your cabinets, appliances, um, that dishwasher, I found it for 50 bucks on Facebook marketplace, washer dryer. That was three fifty for that pair. And, um, on Facebook marketplace, again, we're going to find a used stove and used fridge. Um, I think you can get them from like a used store for about 500 bucks. Um, roof, assuming we're going to do the work ourselves, um, just shingle and all that shit would have been about five. When we base, when we walk through a flip, we're basically itemizing everything, breaking it down by room to say, if only one uh, room needs floor, okay, how much floor? If we're doing the whole house, how much do we need? What kind of build quality do you want? Do you want uh, stainless steel appliances? Do you want white appliances? It's about knowing your market. Um, at $180,000 uh, price, a lot of people would probably assume you're getting um, non-stainless appliances. By us going stainless for a few extra hundred bucks, it's getting a, a buyer that's, okay, first home, $180,000. Oh, I get stainless steel appliances? This is great. Um laundry on the main floor, those units, those, that washer dryer is nicer than the shit I have in my house. Um, but at a $350 price, it's worth it because again, the, the buyer walks through and they're like, okay, I'm getting nice appliances. I'm getting a nice bathroom. I'm getting a nice kitchen. Um, and when we didn't do the roof, we looked at the siding and said, okay, for less than the roof is going to cost, we can still do the siding which is really going to make the house stand out on the outside. Um, so that wasn't budget. Well, it was kind of budgeted with the roof, but we didn't budget the siding in there uh, originally. Um, paint, you can do your estimates for painting. You can do your estimates for kitchen cabinets and whatever else. It's hard estimating your time though. So you want to make sure with that, um, 
the potential profit of $25,000 each, you want to make sure that's going to pay for your time. Um, I'm usually, he's been working there a few more days cause he's not working full time. Um, I'm there one or two days a week for five or six hours. So I'm putting in 10 hours a week for, um, a few months and I'm going to make $25,000 off this thing. And yeah, a lot of it, you're doing a roof at 95 fucking degrees outside, or you're pu- trying to finish up siding when it's fucking 20 out. It's, it sucks sometimes, but shit's got to get done. Nice. Yeah, that makes sense. So really, I mean, it sounds like you're kind of just going through and like, I guess someone that, you know, the expenses off the top of your head a little bit better, but maybe someone that isn't familiar with the prices of materials, just go through and kind of look at what prices might cost on Home Depot and kind of go from there and just make an itemized list as you walk through. Oh yeah. I mean, uh, that's what we would do. So like the last few houses we've been walking through, it's okay. Take a note of everything it needs. Doesn't need floor. Doesn't need toilets. Doesn't need a new tub. Doesn't need whatever. And if you don't know your prices, yeah, go on Home Depot's website or just walk the store for an hour or two and take a note of everything. And even when you're walking the store, there they have a hundred fucking toilets in that store. You got to decide if you want a nice one or if you just want one that flushes. Same with light fixtures. Light fixtures, there's 3,000 in that fucking store. You could spend an entire day just looking at light fixtures. You just have to figure out what what you want to do for that house. I actually, I got a question for you. So I, I guess jumping back, um, what, uh, what had you deciding this house? Like what made you choose this one over all the other ones? Uh, I got a phone call from my buddy that he put in a fucking offer that was accepted. So um, he bought another house in Hazel Park. That was his first or it was a second flip, but this was the first flip during this time frame. He was putting in another offer on another house. And he's basically like, if I get this third house, I'll give you this house, um, assuming you're good with the numbers and everything else. So you could work on this one. Uh, He'll work on the other two. That other one for him fell through. And he was still, again, we're both just starting out. He was a little tight on cash. So he found it in his best interest that we split our uh, costs. Gotcha. And then going forward, when you go to choose the next couple properties, like what's your, what's your strategy there? So even obviously looking at the numbers here, um, even with going 10,000 over the asking price, we still have the potential to make $50,000. So um, regardless of the air, I mean, everything, it's a hot market right now, obviously as interest rates go up, there's potential for the market to really slow down. We also price this at, okay, at 130,000 total invested. If we were to refinance and cash out, we could get most of our cash out and the house should rent in that area with what it has and the nice um, features that we put inside of it for, I would say 14 or 1500 a month. So we'd still have a very nice cash flowing house, which is one of the big things we looked at is, okay, if the market were to collapse tomorrow and we couldn't fucking sell this thing, can we still um, run it out or at least be fine doing that? And the answer is yes. So I would, when I'm looking at a new house, the majority of the houses I'm looking at now are for rentals only. It's going to be less work if I do a cash out refinance on it, uh, purchasing it, purchasing it cash up front. I can keep the house, put less work into it, less time into it and go buy the next property. If I'm doing a flip though, I want to kind of set it up to where if the market were to take a shit tomorrow, I'm still fine and I'm not screwed out of a ton of money. What other questions do you guys have? That's a good question, Andy. Now going forward with anything you do from here, you know, from here forward, is there a certain, uh, you know, when you break down all your numbers, all, all your projected costs, all stuff, is there a certain uh, profit margin you have to see in order for you to be worth it? Like, is it 40 K is it 50 is it 60 in order for you to even consider, you know, picking it up. So with how long this took, and obviously I have the van, I have the tools, I have the knowledge to do all this. The next time I'm looking at a flip and even for rentals, 
I'm almost pricing it out as if I were to pay a contractor to do this, can I still make money on it? And that way I can pick and choose. Uh, like my buddy hates drywall work, hates painting. He's like, I'll fucking pay somebody next house. I'll pay somebody to do this. I'll pay somebody to do that. After you flip your first house or your second house or whatever, as you do the work, you realize you fucking hate doing shit pretty quick. Um, I don't mind laying floor. I don't mind doing outside work. I don't painting. It takes a while, but you know what? I don't mind doing it because it comes out good. Um, there's nothing I really won't do, but if the numbers work out to where I could pay somebody to do it, sit on my ass at home or just go to my nine to five job and work it. And I'm still, instead of profiting 25, if I still profit five or 10, but I'm not doing the work. Hell yeah. I do that instead. I had a question. So this one's more about um, the mistakes. What if you were going to redo this, you had to do it differently or like you're going into another deal. What are like your three biggest takeaways that you learned from doing this? Uh, walk through the house before we have an accepted offer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I mean, even during the inspection, I'm pointing out shit that it's like, Oh, I guess I didn't notice that before. And it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, how'd you not notice this shit? Um, to where even the realtor I've been using, he understands what we're looking for. He understands that we might be looking at the shittiest house on the block, but he's going to point out everything it needs to where if we don't see something, he's pointing it out for us to make sure we don't miss anything. Um, is the floor sloping? Is the Are the walls uneven? Is it? Does he see something that's fucked up on it that could break the deal? Um, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, getting something a little closer to home. So from work, I work in Romeo. So this is probably about 20 minutes from Romeo. So I try to go there after work. Um, from home, it's about a 45 minute drive. So 45 minutes there, 45 minutes back. It's an hour and a half every day that I go there. That's just wasted time in the fucking van. Um, if I could be spending that time either at home or working on the house, it's going to be a lot better. So finding something closer to home would be ideal. But when you're flipping in this competitive market right now, you really can't like pick and choose that kind of shit. 